Hello, welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own uh, version of a snake game. So snake game, nice and simple. You have a snake that moves around the screen collecting food. Every time it collects food it gets a little bit bigger and the game gets harder and harder and harder until the screen fills up and you can't move anywhere so you end up with game over. And the idea here is, is to get the highest possible score or the, the longest possible snake and it will keep track of how long your snake is and you can die by either hitting your own snake or by hitting the end of the screen so let me show you hitting my own snake let's go there good gets game over and I got a snake that was six long there we go okay so let's get started here we go let's uh, just do uh, scratch there we go and let's click create Excellent. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get create our snake and we're going to try and get him to move around the screen. We're not going to use Scratch himself today, we'll get rid of him, but let's create a new sprite and we'll switch over to vector mode so it's less blocky. Uh, good, we're in vector mode. We'll choose the square, uh, square tool. If you notice here on the screen here it says if you hold shift, you might just see that, it will create a, scare, a square. So here at the moment it can create a rectangle but we need a perfect square so what we're going to do instead of that let's just undo that is we're going to we're going to hold shift now what we'll also do here is we'll make it a solid square and I'll change the color to a different color and hold shift there you can see because I'm holding shift it will make a nice neat square and about that size we might have to tweak it in a little while but there you go, you can see it there. And then let's click the centralize. Let's put him dead center. There we go, good. So, and now we've got our snake. Uh, in fact, let's just rename it, let's call him Snake. So we know who's who. We've got our snake there, which is good. And let's get rid of Scratch, good. So we've got our snake, and at the start of the game, what we want to do is when start pressed, let's show him just in case he's hidden for some reason and let's send him right to the center of the screen this is really important this going to the center uh, the reason being is actually if you look at snake it's just one big in fact you can't see it on there we'll close that now anyway um, it's just one big grid and each time the snake moves on the grid so we need to be in the correct position otherwise it's not going to work so we start in the dead center there good brilliant so here we go at the start. When we press start, it goes right to the center, which is brilliant. And now what we need to do is we need to control how he moves up, down, left, and right. Simple, uh, simple controls. If you're holding left, the next time he goes to move, he'll move left. If you're holding right, then the next time he moves, he'll move right. If I actually, I think if you just tap it, it will, uh, it will do that. Um, so whichever button you tap, uh, up, down, left, right, whichever one was the last one was tapped it will move in that direction when it next moves uh, on the next tick of the clock. So we need a forever loop and we need an if statement because we're going to need to keep checking what direction, keep changing its direction. And all we do here is we say, okay, if, let's have a look, key up arrow is pressed. What we'll do is we'll create a variable, call it direction. And if the up arrow is pressed, We'll just do set direction to U for up. And we'll do exactly the same thing. Down arrow, oh, down arrow, and that'll be a D. For all of the other up, down, uh, L for left. And then finally, R for right. There you go. So now it won't actually move, but if you look at the direction, if I press up, it changes to up, right, down. So that now is remembering what direction he is facing in, which is good. Excellent. Good. So now what we do is we've got that bit sorted in that loop. Now we'll move over to our main loop, which should go from here. Let's have a look. And let's just pop our loop forever. Perfect. Good stuff. Excellent. And all we have to do now is to say, okay, uh, if his direction, we can use that direction now, use that direction variable, 
if his direction equals up, uh, which is u, there you go, if his direction equals u, then we're going to change his y coordinate, change y by a certain amount. But now, how much do we change it by? Well, we don't really know. Uh, we're going to have to play with it to make it work, and we might even change our mind. So what we're going to do is we won't hard code it by typing a number in there, because obviously we're going to have to do that for here, 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 and a few of the other things as well. What we'll do is we'll create another variable, and let's call this the um, move distance. There we are. So that's the move distance. So each time it hops, how far it moves. There we go. And at the start of the game, we'll set the moves distance to, let's do 25. That should be fine, hopefully. And now what we do is we set it up like that. So if the direction is up, change the Y by 25, duplicate. There we go, which is okay. Now what we need to do is here, if the direction is down, we need to change it by minus 25. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use a nice, neat little trick. Instead of changing Y by move distance, we do change y by 0 minus move distance. And that means that instead of being 25, it will be minus 25. There we go. Good stuff. And oh, if I actually, we'll just do it separate. There we go. So if it's up, do that. If it's down, do that. Now we do the left and right. But instead of doing the y coordinate, which controls up and down, we do the, left, uh, the x coordinate, which controls left and right. So if the direction equals L, and then we'll just duplicate that before we put the next bit in. R, there we go. And this time we change X. X, good. And that one be move distance there. And then R would be not minus move distance. There you go. So just make sure you've got Y there uh, for the up and down. And then L and, uh, X for the left and right. And that should be fine. What we'll also do as well is, um, at the start of the game, let's set the direction to R at the start of the game. There we go. So now, hopefully, oh, there you go. Perfect. Good. You can see he's moving there. Good. So now he's moving. And uh, I'd imagine if I hold left and right, uh, right, he will probably move a different direction, will he? Oh, right doesn't look quite right there, but we'll have a look. Um, oh, because those two are the wrong way around. Left needs to go left. Now, swap those two round. X naught minus move distance, and then move distance of that, hopefully now. There you go. You can see he's moving up, down, left, and right. He's going a little bit quick. And the reason he's doing that is because there's no delay in between each tick in the clock here. So let's put a one second delay to start off. Uh, one second. Now, the delay here, this uh, the speed at which he moves around, if you remember the original Snake game, I think, um, he sort of speeded up, so the more food you got, the more um, the uh, the faster he would go, and therefore it made it a little bit more difficult. So in order to achieve that, what we're going to have to do is, again, we can't hard code this delay. What we can do is we can do a, um, let's call it delay, create another variable, because it's going to change, call it delay, and at the start of the game, set the delay to 1 for 1 second, which is great wait and then wait delay seconds and what it means now is we can change the code so that each time we get a bit of food we just take a little bit off that delay variable value uh, and that will then hopefully mean it'll start to move a bit quicker so let's have a look at this now let's there we go so that's starting to look a little bit better which is good uh, we don't know yet as to whether or not we've got the right values whether it's going to move properly, but we already were starting to get something of a snake, which is good. Perfect. Excellent. So we've got the snake there, and now we've got him moving. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to duplicate this, and we need to... Uh, let's have a look. Just duplicate that. And here on the duplicate, get rid of... Um, get rid of all those. Get rid of all those. On the duplicate here, which is going to be the food version, let's paint him a different colour. There you go. Brilliant. So there's our food, and we need to go collect him. And at that point, we'll need to go a, uh, get a little bit, a little bit longer, which is good. So there's our food, and for the start at the moment, in fact, let's just 
for the moment, I'm just going to put him there. And what we'll do is events. Okay. Uh, when start click. Qu uh, when start clicked. Let's uh, forever. Wait until forever. Wait until touching um, the snake. Wait until touching the snake. And then we will move to a random location. But we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, so here it's going to say wait until touching snake and then move to a random location. Um, there we go. Good. So here's our snake here. And our snake's ready to rock. He's moving. And we've got a bit of food, which is good. So now what we need to do is we need to get it to collect the uh, collect the food. But you can also see there's a bit of a problem here because that food now is not actually in the correct position. It's not quite aligned properly. And the reason is, is he's not actually aligning to the grid. So what we need to do is make sure at the start of the game, he moves to a random position, but it's a random position on this kind of invisible grid. And this actually is where this uh, move distance comes in really, really handy. Because what we can say is, okay, what we're going to do at the start of the game, we're going to go to a random position. Okay, so let's have a look. Go to, there we are. Uh, random go to X and here what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of maths and we're going to say okay I want you to give me a random number now the X coordinates depending on how many points there are on the grid I reckon there's going to be about 18 points on this grid uh, all the way across here so what we'll do is we'll go okay minus 9 to 9 which gives us 18 which gives us 19 I think but hey ho uh, and we're going to multiply that random number that we get there by the move distance, which at the moment is 25. So let's say you get minus 2, then the move distance is going to be minus 50. In fact, actually, if you just get this out for the moment, double click on it, you can see what it's given us is a random position on this grid, but in an interval, let's double click on that again, in intervals of 25. So now we could do that with the x do that with the y which is good uh this one i think because y there's not going to be as much space on the y corner because it's a bit smaller i reckon we'll have about 18 there but let's go minus six to six to six on this i think this works out about right we can find out there we go so now every time we press uh oh that's oh, done it has it done it a little bit off and I think the reason being is let's just check these costume centers that's dead center is that dead center hmm I don't know why it's a little bit off anyhow we'll look at that in a bit I'm not too worried we'll sort that out so good there we go so we've got minus uh minus nine to nine minus six to six is that the snakes going to the right place I oh, know we should be okay uh, there we go. So he moves to a random position, and what we do here is we say, okay, wait until touching the snake, and then again, go to the uh, go to a random position. Uh, uh, there we go. Which should work fine. So now every time I touch a snake, let's see if we can get it to touch the snake. Hopefully. There you go. He moves to a random position. Good. Which is great. I think these are about, these are, might be somewhere wrong there. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, but I'll sort that out in a minute. There you go. So he moves, the snake moves, which is good. Uh, and we're starting to get there, which is fine. But there's a problem. What if this bit of food here, when it goes to a random position, what if that random position happens to be touching the snake? Now, when there's only, the snake's only small, that's not going to make a big difference um, because it's unlikely you've got a big grid there. It's, it's unlikely it's going to land in the same place. Um, but it is a possibility. So what have we got to do that? Well, what we need to do say is, okay, um, let's just repeat until inside of here. Uh, there we go. Repeat until. And let's put that the other way around. Repeat until not touching that colour. There we go. 
repeat until not touching color yeah there you go so that way we know it's guaranteed never to touch the brown color when we start because uh, it will go to a random position uh, and then if it's not touching the color it's fine or it'll keep going in here until it's touching the color uh, which is good also here is when we do touch the snake wait until touching the snake now what we need to say is uh, we've just been eaten okay so uh, let's create a new variable and let's call it uh, just been eaten or food eaten no no food eaten food eaten good food eaten and set that to true there we go good stuff so wait until you touch the snake set uh there we go and then once it touches that set uh, the snake set food eaten to true which means of course here at the start we need to set food eaten to false good so hopefully now yep food eaten is false there we go move across here I don't know why it's got that problem there, but we'll sort that out in a minute. There we go. And now, as you can see, it's set the food eaten to true. And the reason we need to do that is because then we need to look at um, making the snake get a little bit longer. Okay, so how do we get the snake to get a bit longer? Well, it's not actually too difficult to make it get longer, uh, constantly get longer, because we can use this, um, this stamp tool. So what we'll do here is... All we'll do is, after we've moved and we've sorted all that, what we'll do is we'll just stamp, which is good. Excellent. So now what happens each time you move, it should, there you go, stamp. Excellent. Good. And there we can see it's just stamping its way along. As we can see here now, I think 25 is a little, is 25 too small? For actually, what we'll do is let's just make our... Um, let's just zoom in here and let's make that a little bit smaller there we go again make sure it's set dead center which is fine set dead center there we go and then do the same with our food make it a little bit smaller ideally you want it so it's not touching when we go let's have a look let's try this way let's go down uh, Okay, a little bit too, uh, still a little bit too much. Let's change that to move distance 30. There we go. And there we go. Now you can, you're can starting to see the grid effect, which is what we were talking about before, which is good. Uh, you'll notice, however, as I keep pressing start, all this rubbish that's still here isn't going away. And the reason is, is what we need to do here is you need to say, okay, at the start of the game, we need to clear whatever has been done before. There we go. And now, oh, that seems to have solved pretty much the problem before as well. Uh, I don't know what happened there. There you go. And that now seems to be working pretty much okay. Uh, as you'll notice there, the Y coordinate, it's gone a little bit too high. It went right up there. We don't want that. So what we need to do there is say, okay, the random, uh, let's do minus, uh, let's do minus five to five. And that hopefully will fix that so it won't now go up there. Let's have a look. Good. Okay, so we're getting a lot closer now. There you go. Good. So our snake gets longer and longer and longer. But that's not really what we want because actually what we want to happen is we want the snake to stay the same length each time. But when he eats the food, then he wants to grow a bit. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we need to do really is we need to keep track of this entire tail and we need to know where the end of the tail is. So how do we do that? Well, it's quite easy. All we really need to do is keep track of the coordinates of each bit of the tail. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need data. This time the variable is no good because we're going to need to keep track of lots of positions. So we're going to need a list. Uh, and x positions there we go we need to create two new lists one for the x positions which is going to contain all the x positions of the snake wherever he goes and another list for the y positions um you can't well you can sort of keep two different coordinates in one list but it's a lot of effort so we're not going to bother with that 
Uh, Scratch doesn't do two dimensional lists very well, so we'll just do two separate lists and keep track of them separate. And now what we do instead is we say, okay, each time we move, what we do is we stamp ourselves and we add our X and our Y coordinates to this list of positions. So, there we go, a not thing. We'll add our X position to our X positions list, our Y position to our Y positions list, and that now, if we press start, you should see, there we go. What it's doing, wherever we move, it's keeping track of our coordinates. Good, brilliant. Which is good, which is fine. So what are we going to do with those coordinates? Well, what we need to do first of all is, in fact, we'll duplicate this one because it's got less stuff on it. Duplicate the snake. Uh, and now what we do is go to the costumes and create a costume, but this time make it white. Make sure it's in the center, dead center. It's about right there. We might have to tweak it slightly. So there's our costume. And what we do is, each time we move, we need to clear the tail. So let's create a broadcast. Oops. In fact, let's do it here. After we stamped, we've done our Y coordinates, which is good. What we do now is we need to clear the tail. So broadcast, clear tail, clear tail. Because we're going to clear the end of our snake's tail. Uh, and now what we do is here on our invisible bit, which is our invisible snake bits. This, oh, have I just got rid of those? Oh no, I've just got rid of the wrong one. Let's put that back on there. That's better. Oops. There you go. Don't take it off that one. We need that. <laughs> we need that on there. So here, what we say here is when I receive clay, uh, clear tail, we're going to show, because we're going to appear. We're going to move. There we are. We're going to go to the position of... Uh, the X coordinate is going to be the first item in the X list. So that would be item number one of X positions. Then we're going to go to the item number one of the Y positions on the Y value. So this little white square is going to go to the position of the first item, which will be the end of the tail. And then what we're going to do is, after we've shown, we're going to stamp. There we go. Which will stamp over the brown tail with a white tail. Uh, and then we'll just hide. Hide, hide, hide. There we are. Let's hide that again. Good, that's okay, that's fine. And what we'll also do as well is we need to, now we've stamped out that, that last position on the tail, the X1 uh, or the Y1, what we also need to do is we need to get rid of those two uh, those two items. Clear the X positions, clear one, clear item one of X positions, clear item two of Y, uh, item one of Y positions, stamp and hide which is good brilliant excellent that's okay good so hopefully now if we start there you go now there's a little there'll be a little bit of stuff to sort out in a minute which we can fix in a minute as you can see uh, there's a few little artifacts there they're knocking about but you can already start to see it's starting to work oh where is it why is that doing that Oh, I know why it's doing that, of course. That's because we've not cleared this lovely list here. As you can see, this, these two lists at the start of the game, what we also need to do is we need to clear those two lists. So get rid of all of the stuff in Y positions, get rid of all the stuff in X positions, and now, there we go. Good. So it's starting to move around, and this time around, it's clearing its tail. We're going to sort out these little bits here in a second, but you can see the idea. And there we go. And it's starting to clear its tail. So now what we need to say is, okay, we're going to keep clearing our tail until we are touching the blue thing here, in which case we don't clear our tail. We ignore this bit here where it's broadcast the clear tail. Um, we just ignore that bit. 
So how do we do that? Okay, we just turn around here and we say, there we are. What we just said, just eaten. You said touching. Ah, there you go. So what we're going to use here is now we're going to use this uh, just eaten or the food eaten here. We're going to say, okay, if we've just eaten food, then we know that we're. Um, if we just eaten the food, we now know that we don't clear the tail because we need to grow a little bit. So what we do here is say, okay, if uh, let's have a look. Just eaten our uh, food eaten. There we are. If our food eaten equals false, then we clear the tail, which is good. Excellent. Uh, and then what we do is, which is fine. If food equals uh, food equals uh, food eaten is true. So now we say, okay, if um, if the if the food eaten is false, then we clear the tail. So that bit there says, okay, if they've not eaten, then we clear off the tail. Otherwise, we ignore that code. And of course, in the next line here, what we say is, okay, if they have just eaten food, now what we do is we need to set just eaten to false or food so food eaten to false uh, food eaten to false and that way it resets it otherwise it'll it'll never start growing uh, again oh sorry it'll keep growing let's have a, let's try that so let's see if that works we're getting nearer now one two three four there you go and now there we go. Now we're starting to work. But you'll notice here, these extra coordinates here have been added. Um, but be when we get the first bit of food, there's a problem because each time around we move and then instantly hide the same previous one. What we want to do here is say, okay, for the first one, when we get the first one, we won't delete the first item in that list. We'll keep that. So what we just say here is, okay, if the length of the list, where's our list? If the length of um, uh, length of doesn't matter if it's x positions or y positions, but I'll just put um, x positions. If the x length of x positions is greater than one, then we start deleting stuff. Here we go. So uh, 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 And now we need a quick and so if there we go good stuff so if we've got more than one item in the list and we've just eaten then uh, sorry and we've not just eaten so we're not just the food's not eaten then we broadcast the clear tail so that hopefully now should fix that bit there can't really see much so let's hide some of these positions uh, or just do it again let's have a look in fact I should leave those on Let's make sure it's working. Although we should be able to see if it's working because the uh, the snake should get a bit lost longer. There you go, brilliant. So now we've got a snake with two pieces. Uh, let's go get him on here, and our snake's starting to get a little bit longer. If you notice there, the what's happened there is the snake's gone off the edge of the screen there as well. The uh, the food. Um, so obviously let's do here, let's do minus eight. So what we'll do here is we'll do uh, minus eight to eight, minus five to five. Oops, why have we done that? Oh, we changed those, but not changed at all. Minus eight to eight. Let's do that again. Let's do minus five to five. There we go. That's better. So, and that should stop that uh, food from going off the edge. Let's hide these positions because we don't need those anymore. We don't need to know what directions we're in. We don't need to know the move distance. That's okay. And we should be okay without the food eaten as well. So let's have a look. And we'll get hide that delay as well. We don't need that. So now we're starting to get quite a bit closer. We've got a snake that moves. We've got uh, we've got it eating foods. Oh, have we? Where's he just gone? Hmm. 
Nope, I've just messed something up here. It must be the food eaten. Food eaten is false. Oh yes, that's working fine now. Don't know what's happening there. I think it's because I thought it needed to get a bit longer, but it's doing okay. Let's have a look. Good. And now hopefully... Yeah, there you go. It's starting to get longer, which is great. It's adding all the coordinates in there. Uh, and it's starting to get a bit longer each time round. There we go. Excellent. Good. Now... Let's sort out that little bit of a problem there with the, um, I don't know if I actually can see it there, look. You can see what the problem is, is that the sprite is just a little bit too small. This sprite needs to be a little bit bigger so that it is getting rid of all of it. You just have to be, just have to take care and just keep trying. Let's hide these, uh, those again. There you go. If you make it a bit bigger, there we are, go to food eaten. And now it's starting to behave a little bit better, isn't it? There you go. There we go. Good. Brilliant. That blue square is a little bit big on that corner. I think that's why it's doing it. It's just looking a bit like it's out of place. Let's just try that. Let's see if that's about right. Whoops. Oh, if you notice, <laughs> I was moving my, my blue thing as well. That's also, you've got to be careful as you do that. Let's have a look. Good, there we go. So we're getting somewhere near now, that's it. Just be careful, as you can see here, um, just be careful not to move to test your game while uh, you're on the costume screen, because it will move that square. And I think that's part of what's causing the problem. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, you can see that there. It just jumped slightly, didn't it? Let's just make sure. Those need to be all on, all in the same place. Now that should be fine now. Hopefully, we'll find out in a minute. Good. So we've now got a snake that gets bigger. We've now got a snake um, that hides its tail as it goes along. And we've got food that appears. What we also need to do now is we need to keep count of the score. Um, so what we can do here, wait until touching snake, food equals true. Let's create a variable. Start the score at zero. There we go. Variable name score. At the start of the game, set the score to zero. And then each time you touch the snake, just change the score by one. So now also we should have a bit of a scoring system that, that, uh, that works. Let's have a look. Yes, there you go. Brilliant. So now we've got the scoring system. So we've got the snake that moves, the snake that grows, food that appears and moves to random places. The scoring system, which is perfect. Now all we need to do is we need to do a game over screen so that when the snake touches itself, it gets game over. Or when it touches the edge, it gets game over. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we go to our snake here. And we wait until it's moved, which is here, just after it's moved. And what we do is before we stamp, so we put more brown on there, we just add an if. Uh, what you'll do is drag that, do that there and there, and that'll put your if onto there. And all we say is, okay, if we're touching, uh, where are we at? Touching the colour brown. So if we're touching the colour brown, or we're touching the edge. If we're touching the colour brown, or we're touching the edge, then what we do is we broadcast um, game over. Uh, and then we'll do the game over thing. So we'll do, if touching the colour, uh, or there, broadcast new message, game over. Good, that's okay. Uh, that's fine. Broadcast game over, and we'll also hide this sprite as well. So let's hide hide this sprite and we'll clear as well we'll do a clear uh, to clear all that screen good so now hopefully let's have a look oh that's okay good 
you know, let's see if that works. Um, two should get longer, which is fine. Let's try going off the edge. Oh, is that not working? Or has that just worked? Oh yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, so we touched the edge, which was fine, and then it said um, game over, which is perfect. So broadcast game over, hide, yep, that's okay, good. So, also here, when the food receives game over, that wants to hide. When I receive game over, we want to hide. Which, of course, means that the food at the start of the game needs to show. Uh, also here, again, this one here needs to hide. When I receive game over, we need to hide, which is fine. Good. Uh, also, when we receive game over for this one, let's stop all the scripts on other scripts on the sprite. And we'll do the same with the snake script here. So, uh, stop other scripts in the sprite. We'll stop this script, actually. And we'll stop the other scripts in the sprite as well. There we go. So, we stop the other scripts in the sprite first, which stops that one. And then we stop this script which will stop that script, and that's all done. So, that's all sorted, hopefully now. Let's just try that out, let's see if that works. There you go, brilliant. So, that's sorted, ready for the game over screen. So, what we're gonna do, let's do the game over screen, uh, paint a new sprite, the game will do vector mode. Now, what I'll do here, let's just move to normal size, I'm going to do a simple game over screen. You guys can do a, a more complicated one. In fact, actually, no. Let's do um, let's do a nicer uh, game. Should we? No, no. I'll do the simple one. There you go. Uh, T. So it's black. Let's do game. Game over. There we go. So it's the game over bits. So it says game over. Again, take take more time on yours, make it look pretty, which is important. And then we'll do score, which is good. Excellent, there we go. So it's gonna say game over, then it's gonna say score, and then here is where your score is going to be displayed. Now we could do, if we wanted, just attach a simple say, Where's our say? And we could just say the score for two seconds when, when it received game over. But it doesn't look as good. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to use the inbuilt numbers and actually get the numbers here to display. So how do we do that? Well, let's just sort this one out first of all. Let's say, okay, when start clicked, we'll hide. When we press start, we'll hide. When we receive game over, we'll show. So that bit will show. So that will show uh, when they get game over. And now what we need to do is let's create a new sprite. And these, this new sprite, or well, there's going to be three of them actually, are going to be made up of numbers. And I'm just going to use these inbuilt numbers here. There we go. Zero. And he's going to go here. We're going to have zero. And then the three numbers here, which is good. Excellent. And... Let's just change that to zero. What we need to do now is we need to add more costumes to this number, going all the way through from zero through to nine. So let's add all these through. Click on letters. A little bit time consuming this, but um, once it's done, it works. Zero, one, two, three. Four, five, there we go, five, six, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two more. Eight. And 
9. Good. So we got 0 to 9 there, which is brilliant. Now here's the important thing. We go through and we change each one of these to just the number. That's really important. So 0 is 0. 1, 2, 3, 5. Oh, make sure, there's <laughs> make sure these are the right numbers, otherwise things are going to go wrong. 4. So go down all the way through. That's number 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Good. Excellent. Not one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Good. Brilliant. So what we do now is we've got all those numbers renamed to the right numbers. And we also need to create one more costume. So click on Paint New Costume and call this blank. Good. There you go. So now we've got a choice of 11 costumes, 0 to 9 and blank. So what we do here is we say, OK, when start clicked, there we go. What we'll do is we'll hide. When we receive game over, we will switch to costume, uh, switch to costume blank, and then straight afterwards, switch to costume. In fact, actually, we can do that here. Do switch to costume at the start because we're blank. Here, you switch to the costume, and what we need to do now is the clever thing is we go to the score, and we get the letter that corresponds to that number. So, we use switch to costume letter. This one is going to do letter one, so it's going to be the first digit. Letter one of score. Good. Done. So now, let's just have a quick go. Let's get a score of, let's see if we can get a score of one. Let's see if that works. Oh, actually, that won't work because what I also need to do is here, when we receive game over, I need to show. Let's do show before we change the costume. Let's do that again. So the score is, let's move to a, can we get one a bit nearer? No, nope, it's not having it today. There you go, so my score's one now. So let's crash off the end, and there you go. My score is one, brilliant. So what we can do now here is duplicate this one here, and this one, instead of letter one, change that to letter two, move that there, and then duplicate it again, and change that to letter three. Good. Now, I'm not gonna go, and try, in order to test this, what I would have to do is go and collect a hundred snakes, but a um, hundred bits of food in order for my score to go up. Uh, but that's going to take quite a bit of a while. So just to, in order to test it, let's just change my set my score to one three four or something like that, whatever you want to set it to. Uh, and let's just make sure, sure I'm not cheat, uh, cheating. Let's just pick up one. There you go. So it goes up by one, and then let's crash off the edge. If I actually oops. There you go. I actually crashed it to myself by pressing back into a snake. And now you can see it works with all three. And that's going to work with any number system right the way up to um, a thousand. You could, I don't think I was going to get more than a thousand because there won't be that much space. Um, but let's just test it here with 200, make sure it's going to work with the zero numbers. There you go. Perfect. So there is, uh, there's your mechanics. So let's just change that map to zero. There's the mechanics of the game. You can see it's not uh, not too difficult. Um, what I'll do here, let's just make that a bit bigger. There we are. It's not too difficult. All that's done. Uh, and it's about ready to rock. Now, improvements. As you can see, mine's quite a simple version. What I would do with your improvements is, instead of having a sprite here where the text is just written, I would use the change of costume and I would use uh, the letters. So you can actually, uh, let me just give you a quick example of that. Say you've got a T there, because it's going to be game over. Uh, oh no, in fact, T's not got a game. Uh, game over's not got a T in it. Um, but if you were to say like start or game over or something, here, instead of saying game over, you've got your T. What you can do is you can add lots of letters. 
I'll just demonstrate with T and T and I. I don't know why. But there you go. You've got two letters here. Let's say you want to say game over, but not with these letters. What you can do is get your separate costumes here. And then what you can do is drag one of your costume into the other one. And it appears there in the same costume. There you go. So you can use those letters to do a, a fancier version of game over and then score. You can do that. But I'll just switch to the standard one, which is okay. I'll get rid of those. Also, um, in the game, it probably has sound effects as well, from what I remember. So you could just add sound effects. Each time your sprite moves, you could go tick, tick, tick. Each time it eats some food, you can make a different noise. Uh, you might want a bit of background music to make it a bit more uh, exciting, more frenetic. Um, and you could add... Um, oh, actually, one quick thing I want to show you just before the end there is... Um, what you can say is each time that you get food... Um, so if food equals int true... Uh, set food to default here. What you can also do is you can uh, change the delay. So change the delay. Here we go. Change delay by minus minus 0 0.01. And what that means now is if you look at the delay, oops, there's the delay. Starts at uh, one, and every time we collect a bit of food, the delay between each move should decrease slightly. Let's have a look. Oops. Yes, there you go. You can see the delay has gone down a little bit here. So, you'll have to have a play with it to work out what the right values are. I've moved it down by 0 0.02. Um, it already it's starting to go up quite a little bit faster. So you might want to play with those values, make sure it's not speeding up too quickly. Um, but that can add extra um, an extra dimension to your game. So there we go. Uh, good luck with that. Any problems, just uh, drop a comment. And as always, if you do like my tutorials, then do subscribe to my channel. There should be a link that's popping up about now. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy uh, scratching.